To begin, remove the lug bolts and front rim from the vehicle. On the back side of the caliper, remove the two bolts holding the brake to the hub. Pull the caliper off the rotor and position it out of the way, ensuring that it is not hanging from the brake line. Locate the speed sensor attached to the rear of the hub and remove the mounting Allen bolt. Once the bolt is removed, twist and pull the sensor to detach it from the hub. This speed sensor will also be attached to the top of the brake shield. Unclip the wiring from the shield and move aside. To begin to remove the hub assembly from the vehicle, start by removing the nut holding the control arm ball joint to the hub. Now on the other side of the hub, remove the nut holding the tie rod arm to the mount. Oftentimes, your tie rod end will be wedged into the mount after the nut has been removed. To release this, use a hammer and with moderate force, strike the hub just above the tie rod arm bracket. On the shock body, remove any wiring that may be clipped onto the unit. Simply pull these clips to remove. Like the tie rod end, you may need to strike the control arm bracket above the ball joint to break the taper loose. You may also need to pry the joint away from the hub. Now, under the hood, locate the three nuts holding the upper strut mount to the vehicle. Remove these nuts, keeping in mind that these are the last mounting nuts holding the shock to the vehicle, so you may need an extra set of hands to hold the strut. You are now able to pull the shock out of the wheel well to begin the next step. Due to the spring tension on the top mount, you'll want to use spring compressors to remove this tension from the strut and mount. Once the unit is secure in the spring compressors, it will be safe to remove the top piston bolt from the shock. With this bolt removed, it is now safe to release the tension on the spring compressors. Using a pipe wrench or other strut tool, remove the top cap holding the OEM shock insert into the shock body. The OEM shock insert will now slide out of the housing. Slide the new Raceline shock insert into the OEM housing. Using the supplied Raceline replacement strut cap, tighten this cap completely to secure new insert into housing. The new spring seat will thread onto the top of this new cap. Slide the race on spring perch over the piston, line up the threads, and tighten the perch to the cap. The OEM bump stop will be removed from the old shock, trimmed and reused with a new coilover setup. Position the race line spring on the perch with the smaller end of the spring on the bottom. Place the OEM top mount onto the new spring and thread the new piston bolt onto the strut. While the shock and spring are shorter than the OEM pieces, you may still need to use spring compressors for this step. Tighten this bolt completely. Now that the shock is fully assembled, feed the unit into the wheel well while lining up the three top mounting studs to the shock tower. Back under the hood, reinstall the three nuts holding the top mount to the shock tower.
Now position the hub in the correct direction and push the lower ball joint into its mounting location. Tighten the ball joint bolt. The speed sensor will now be reinstalled. Remember that the sensor will slide in offset and twist into place before you can insert the Allen bolt to tighten the sensor to the hub. Reclip the sensor line to the back of the brake shield. Make sure the brake pads are in place and slide the brake caliper back into its correct position on the rotor. Install the two bolts that hold the caliper to the hub. Push the tie rod end into its mounting tab on the hub and reinstall the nut. Reclip any sensor lines you removed from the strut body. Now that everything is secure, you can reinstall the front wheel. Moving to the back, remove the lug bolts and set the wheel aside. To start the rear, you'll begin by removing the rear shock. Remove the bolt holding the bottom of the shock to the vehicle. The rear hub will lower slightly once this bolt is removed. To remove the shock from the rear shock tower, you will need to access the two top mount nuts in the trunk of the vehicle. This may require pulling back the trunk carpet to gain access to these nuts. Remove these two and the shock can now be removed from the vehicle. To allow more room to remove the spring from its seat, remove the nut holding the sway bar end link to the control arm. Now that tension is removed from the spring, use both hands to pull down on the spring to remove it from its spring seat. If you are unable to do so by hand, using a pry bar can also be helpful. Now remove the bolt that holds the rear top mount to the shock. The top mount will be reused. With the supplied washer on the bottom, place the OEM top mount onto the Raceline rear shock. Tighten the shock strut bolt to secure the top mount to the shock. The rear shock is now assembled and can be reinstalled on the vehicle. Feed the shock through the strut tower while aligning the top mount studs into the shock tower. Reinstall the two upper mounting nuts to secure the top mount. You will now install the spring. With the race on spring perch located on the top of the spring, place the spring onto the OEM spring seats. While holding the spring, lift the hub into place to allow you to reinstall the lower shock's mounting bolt. Align sway bar and link into place and tighten both shock bolt and end link nut. The rear installation is complete and you can now reinstall the rear wheel.